please discuss the background for this study. Well, we decided to do the study mostly because I was curious. Um, as a pediatric urologist and as a woman in urology, I had a, a vested interest, I guess you could say, in who's putting out the literature that we read and gives the advice that we follow. And so one of my undergrads had brought this to me as a, sort of an idea. And we decided we were going to look at the Journal of Urology, and then it became a larger scope, all of the subspecialty journals. And what we specifically wanted to look at was the idea that women publish less than men, um, that, and this is often promulgated by mentorship um, and sponsorship being a little bit different for the different genders. There's a perception among women that they are not um, mentored as much, not sponsored as much, and there's certainly data to support that that happens in many medical and surgical subspecialties. And so we wanted to investigate in terms of end product, looking at at least manuscripts, peer-reviewed manuscripts, does this seem to be true? What were some of the notable findings and were any of them surprising to you or your co-authors? Yeah, um, I think we were very surprised to find that we, while well, we were happy to find that and happily disappointed, I guess, to re, uh, reject our null hypothesis. And we found that more of our senior authors were women than we had anticipated. The proportion of first authors parallels the amount, um, the proportion of women that's currently in training, but our senior authors were higher. And that was somewhat surprising to us um, because again, there are good data and there's certainly a perception in fields that women don't have the same degree of mentorship and sponsorship that their male colleagues experience. And so we were delighted to see this. And we were especially surprised to see that this difference was most pronounced in terms of journals that had double-blinded peer review. And this was really reassuring to us because we are looking at peer-reviewed articles. We're not looking at invited commentaries. We're not looking at opinion pieces. Um, we're looking at peer-reviewed articles, and we're looking at double-blinded peer-reviewed articles, and that really tells us that, at least within our specialty, that this is solid research that stands on its own and is appreciated by our colleagues. So there doesn't appear to be favoritism that you're just getting this uh, published because you're a woman. Do you and your co-authors plan to conduct further research on this topic, and if so, what would the focus be? Yeah, we're very interested in looking at what the trajectory is over time, particularly with the, I, I can't really say exponential, but certainly rapid, very steep growth in the proportion of women within this field in the last decade or so. Um, right now, um, about 9% of practicing urologists are women and about 25% of our trainees are women. And cer certainly this is continuing to increase and it will be interesting to see what happens over the next few years. So when we're looking at the last five years, is that a snapshot in time? Are the numbers, the proportions were pretty stable over that period. Um, but it would be nice to see if, uh, what the trajectory looks like now that attention is really being given to the role of women in urology and particularly academic urology and sharing information. What would you say is the take home message for the practicing urologist? I think there's, it depends exactly what your practice is. Um, so I think in general, you know, the first thing is don't count women out simply because they're women. And I think that goes for women, that goes for men. Um, there's an opportunity for everyone to seek out mentorship and find the mentor that's right for you. Um, I think also this really underscores the importance of finding a good mentor. Um, and whether that mentor is male or female or whatever they happen to be, I think that our findings really show that if you do good work, it will be appreciated by your colleagues. So if there's something about which you feel passionate, if there is a topic that you feel hasn't been addressed in urology, if there's something that you feel you have a unique perspective on, a different lens by which to approach a problem, by all means, go find that person that will help you to actually look at this, get it published, think about it in a thoughtful manner. Um, for, you know, for private practice urologists, I think this also speaks to you don't have to be in academics to publish your findings. Uh, we really want to hear from everybody. And we noted as we looked through this that there are quite a few people who are in private practice that you wouldn't expect to be the traditional people publishing lots of papers. So um, you know, there's certainly different practice types, um, different urologists, not just the, the standard urologist of whom we, we think um, that can be publishing their work and sharing their findings. Is there anything else that you feel our audience uh, should know about the, the findings of your research? I think our paper pretty much stands for itself. I, um, 
again, I really think it speaks to the importance of finding the right mentor. Um, we certainly, you know, there's a perception that only women can mentor women um, and only men can mentor men. And I, I think that it really just needs to be, you, you have to find someone who will promote you, promote your work, promote your interests and push your career forward or help you push your own career forward. Um, find someone who will help propel your interests. Um, I believe that all of those things I just said are changing, you know, that it doesn't have to be, this is the right mentor, you know, this one-to-one -one correlation, but really looking uh, forward to colleagues that will help to help you, you know, make, help you make a need, meet a need, uh, do something that will answer a question and address the gap in the literature and a gap in our knowledge is really important. So don't pigeonhole yourself and don't let others pigeonhole you.